Ruby, the beginning of the end, pulls off an impressive feat. It's all about the villain's backstory, and they still manage to explain as little as possible. J.J. Abrams would be proud. Basically, the episode is a series of vignettes that go through Cinder recruiting Emerald and Mercury, taking out Amber, getting Adam on her side, and then the aftermath of that they pulled in the fight with Yang. This episode has its solid points, but frankly, the storytelling leaves a lot to be desired. The vignettes are bookended by these black screens with random dialogue snippets. I think this is supposed to convey both meaning and the passage of time, but it's hard to understand and kind of confusing. But there is a fairly significant and interesting thing in there. Cinder seems to be talking to someone or something with power or seniority over her, so she's not working completely on her own. Alright, now on to her henchmen. We get some more details on Emerald's semblance. She was the one who deceived Yang. She can make people see things that aren't there, and she also uses this ability in her street rat thieving life, and to lure Amber into a trap. It's a trap! Then Mercury gets his chance to shine. You see, his father was both an assassin and an abusive creep. Also, Mercury has robo-legs! They sort of imply that he needed the prosthetics after he fought and killed his dad, but it's hard to say when exactly he got them. Okay, now let's look at that action scene. The fight with Cinder, Mercury, and Emerald versus Amber was... okay. There's lots of punching, kicking, shooting, and magic superpowers to keep you entertained. But that's where the over-the-top nature of the show comes back to bite it. The maiden powers just aren't that cool. Let's compare it to the Avatar state. We know that benders, even really powerful ones, can't do the kind of stuff that the Avatar can do. Amber comes off a lot more like Storm from the X-Men. She's powerful, but by no means peerless. And honestly, are the powers really worth it if she can get taken out by three dudes? Yeah, Crow kind of oversold her last episode. We also see that Adam has been collaborating with Cindy from the start. But it wasn't really by choice. Once Cindy gets all juiced up on maiden power, she strong arms him into it. And based on his wannabe rebel leader shtick, he may be kind of resentful of that. Okay, now it's time to break down the good and the bad in Ruby, the beginning of the end. On the good side, the backstory on Emerald and Mercury was interesting, the fight with the Fall Maiden was cool, and it was good to see Cinder do that bad juju that she do do so well. On the other hand, the story was convoluted with all its time jumping. The Maiden powers, at least so far, come off as just really powerful and not world reshapingly awesome, and for every answered question, a new one gets raised. But that's all really background noise, so I give Ruby, the beginning of the end, a 4 out of 5. Now, if you're interested in more reviews of anime, movies, TV shows, comic books, and video games, check out my channel on YouTube at StupidPrivate913. Or find my Facebook and DeviantArt pages for video updates and more. Thank you for watching. Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private.